The jewel wasp is a parasitoid species. Which means that they will find a host and they will lay an egg onto a host. In this case, it's a cockroach. And then they will use this cockroach to rear their babies. We've selected a new cockroach that we have named Carl. Carl's a perfect specimen. He's nice and big. So we're hoping that he is, he is the one. Come on, you can do it. Usually the jewel wasps go for it straight away if they're interested. So we'd know like as soon as we put it in, she's on it. She feels the smell of, of Carl. She will grab, uh, grab him by, uh, by the neck. Grab it. Oh, oh good. She's good. got one. It's fun of quite a fight. Yeah, <laughs> The average cockroach is twice the size of a jewel wasp, so Ripley must rely on stinging Carl with a powerful venom. Strong. Yeah. Mm. Ripley stung him right under his head. This helps to paralyze him so he can't escape. Ripley's venom blocks a neurotransmitter in Carl's brain keeping him alive, but making him sluggish and slow moving. In the insect house, Ripley's jewel wasp larva has hatched. It's bad news for cockroach host Carl. Carl is alive, but he's not really himself anymore. He just exists to feed Ripley's baby, really. The larva will feed on Carl's surface for a couple of days. And then it'll start to burrow into Carl and start eating all the least essential organs first, just because it wants to keep its zombie host alive for as long as possible. Everybody likes fresh food. Inside Carl, the larva enters the pupa stage, starting its transformation into a wasp. Carl dies, it just pupates inside him and hatches out, bursts out the uh, dead cockroach. Back at the insect house, where there's a shortage of female jewel wasps, keepers are hoping a girl will emerge from the corpse of Carl the cockroach to save their colony. At 3.10 p.m., jewel wasp Ripley's child is born, weighing a healthy 0.7 grams. Out of Carl's abdomen comes a full adult wasp, alien style. 